right guys welcome back to the channel welcome back to hex speed so i just got back from a three week work trip and i got some new toys to play with so um i kind of had a moment of weakness and uh decided you know what we're gonna change the motor on this thing so if you guys saw my previous post um You'll know that I picked up a DLE 222 and a Bela, however you say that, Bela, Bela. It's a 28 by 12 prop, which is almost scale diameter. <laughs> it's close. I think scale diameter is actually closer to 30 inches, about 29 and some change. But this is close enough. So, um, obviously the 222 huge motor uh, four cylinder obviously two stroke um, made for large aerobatic airplanes or large scale scale airplanes so uh, it's 20 horsepower which is a lot <laughs> and it weighs uh, the motor core itself weighs just about 10 pounds 10 and a half pounds um, the original motor that was in this model is a 95 cc which is it was definitely not underpowered it wasn't crazy overly powered but it had this super neat scale exhaust custom made motor mount exhaust thing so this is a bryson 5.8 so i will be cleaning this up and selling it it does run super strong this would work with any zrolli or bates bearcat the same size so 86 to 87 inches anyways um but i wanted to run a scale prop and the only way to run a scale prop this size is to have a huge radial, which are insanely expensive and a pain in the butt to maintain and keep running properly, or a huge two stroke. <laughs> and uh, the four cylinders sound pretty cool. They sound like kind of all the same at higher um, RPM, but at idle, these things have a pretty nasty, choppy sound to them. So, anyways, uh, I'd like to put smoke on it and everything else. These, these mufflers are huge. They come plumbed for smoke. There's a little nipple on there. Um, anyways, uh, yeah, so as you can see, this thing fits in the cowl with tons of room. So um, I had picked up this 3D printed motor a while back and uh, it just wasn't going to work with this setup. I would have had to have cut a ton of this out for it to fit. I still got to modify it to work with the DLE. <clears throat> I'm gonna open up the the gearbox case pretty big just to even get the hub through it. This hub is gigantic, um, and I'm probably gonna have to grind a couple of the cylinders out on the backside to make room because uh, <clears throat> a lot of models you see with dummy radials they don't do it right. Maybe it's because of packaging, like in this particular case, because on a on a real Warbird, or a Bearcat, or a Corsair, or whatever, the motors aren't all the way to the face of the cowling like that. And that's how pretty much everyone mounts them. Um, they sit back in the cowling a little bit. So, anyways, uh, I'm going to try and get as far back as I can. Unfortunately, I'm pretty sure that uh, it's not going to end up too much different. So, like I said, i got to cut a bunch out of this thing to make it all fit. Um, but anyways, hopefully it'll work. If not, I'm going to end up having to do something like what the original had, which this is just kind of a cheesy, you know, fake radial. Um, you could make this look a lot nicer than it did. It was just super plain looking, but, uh, anyways, yeah, so, and you know, something like this would work. It, I would like it if it had like some more of this detail stuff on it and the push rod tubes and everything else, which you could do. Um, and I could, if this isn't going to work out, which would really suck because it was pretty expensive actually. It was like 120 bucks. Um, if for whatever reason I can't make that work without just completely hacking it all up, I'll maybe look into something like this and then just modify it to work. But I was hoping to do some sort of scale exhaust because. I really like that on this. It was neat to see the smoke coming out of the stacks and everything else. But this one is going to be a lot more difficult to do that. So the reason is 
it's such a long motor good grief this thing's heavy it's such a long motor that it has to be mounted all the way up against the firewall and uh, as you can see the scale location is kind of right behind the cylinders so where it comes out you could probably figure out a way to do all that with some seriously custom welding and pipe bending and stuff and it but I just uh, I don't see it happening at least right away so the plan is to run stock mufflers probably with smoke at some point and uh, it's just easier that way I, I don't know it'd be nice to have a bunch of cool scale stuff going on here with the scale exhaust and everything else but um, anyways so that's where we're at with that uh, the airplane is so I don't think I showed it in the last videos um, but I did get all the bodywork finished a few weeks ago before I left my work trip and I got the top of the rudder fitting super nice I pretty much ended up completely redoing that block on top so I got everything body worked in real nice so basically I'm just down to needing to recover the, the tails and uh, here you can see I have the uh, pole pull set up run through the fuselage now so that all works um, so yeah I just need to cover these and uh, get them hinged up and then that part of the redo is over and then I'll have to concentrate on getting this canopy finished up and then obviously I'm gonna have to do some work to make all this jive um, may end up having to reinforce the firewall a little bit it is a pretty heavy duty firewall but depending on where the bolts go for this motor I may end up having to add a second plate just to beef things up um, and it is it is glassed into the fuselage and everything on the backside, so the mount itself is securely attached to the fuselage, but I'm going to end up kind of going through the whole thing, and obviously now with 20 horsepower hanging off the front, and a huge prop, and everything else, um, yeah, so it's going to take some abuse, so anyways, uh, Yep, I'm gonna have to do some reinforcements and some figuring out um, as far as like servo placement. Planning up having to change the fuel tank. I got a lot of work to do. So this just went from a hey, I'm almost finished moment with the tail stuff and the canopy to to uh, uh, yeah, a lot more work to do. <laughs> so I was really hoping to have this thing flying for the uh, scale event in Arizona in March. And now I don't quite see that happening. Um, so, because I have some other projects I need, I need to do as well. Um, and one of them is in this large white box right here. So, I'll explain that in a second. But, uh, yeah, so I, I don't want to rush this project. This is kind of like a dream war bird now at this point, like with all the things going on. So, I want to do it right, and there's a lot of work to be done now. I gotta, I'm going to have to um, fully fix the cowling. Like, it's got all these holes in it and stuff that I got to patch back in because I don't need any of those. Um, so if you're wondering about weights and stuff, so this was nine and a half pounds with this huge muffler, custom made deal. And this is 10 and a half pounds for the core. The mufflers are super light, so I'm not even really, there's a couple ounces. Um, this 3D printer motor is quite a bit heavier. It's almost a pound, but we pulled almost exactly a pound of this cowling had uh, lead in the nose, lead up front, and then silicone and the glue and everything else was about a pound. So that was uh, silicone was to hold in the plastic radial over there. But anyways, so that's where we're at with this. So this is uh, pretty exciting stuff, obviously. Um, <laughs> this prop is ridiculous. And uh, yeah, so this is a 28 by 12. Um, which they have different, they have a 28 by 14 and then 20 by 16, maybe 20 by 18. Uh, one of the things aside from just being grossly overpowered to begin with that I was worried about running this setup is the thrust at idle. So this thing already doesn't like to stop rolling. So having this huge thing up here, even at idle speed is going to be making a pretty decent amount of thrust. So, um, Basically, I went with a 12 pitch 
that's what the old prop was the old prop was a 2612 and uh you know people say oh isn't that way too much horsepower like uh technically yes but also it depends on how you're using the power so in this case a pretty low pitch prop for a four blade especially uh, these props are not efficient so a lot of horsepower is going to get wasted just because four blade props compared to two blades are just way less efficient this is a super fat airfoil it's not a real efficient design to begin with even if it were just a two blade so anyways uh yeah so we're gonna lose a bunch of thrust and efficiency with just being a four blade prop so the only issues i see with this setup would be um, actually over speeding the prop in, in other words, spinning it too fast um, because these props are made to be used with radials typically. Although this particular prop didn't have an RPM limit, but some of the other ones on their list had progressively lower limits. So the 28 by 14, I think, was limited to 4,500 or so, and the 28 by 12 or uh, 16 or 18, whatever it was, was like 3,800 um, RPM. So those props are made like for a Moki 250. So they don't spin very high. They don't spin very fast, I should say. So anyways, I'm gonna have to limit the throttle anyways. It obviously doesn't need 20 horsepower. I'd be curious to know, I think these 95 cc's, I wanna say they're rated at like seven or eight horsepower. So, um, so yeah, it's a lot of horsepower, but you know, just like anything else, you don't have to use full power. It's not good. This thing will probably come off the ground at about third throttles, what I'm guessing at right now. And it'll probably won't even need anything more than half throttle. So I'm sure I'll fly it with it fully set up at first with full throttle um, enabled. But I'm sure at some point I'm going to dial it back down to, you know, really not needing much more than half throttle, to be honest with you. So... It should swing this prop no problem. These motors are rated up to like a 36 inch two blade prop. So like a 36 by 12 or a 35 by, by 12. So anyways, um, a ton of prop. And this being a 28 inch, even though it's a four blade. Um, and like I said, I don't plan on spinning it super hard to begin with. So I'm not even going to be using all the power the motor has. But it uh, should be pretty rad. So... Um, I probably end up having to add a little bit of drag to the wheels so it'll stop rolling. But again, we'll see. I mean, if this thing can idle pretty low, which this is a pretty heavy prop, so I'm thinking it'll have some flywheel effect to keep it uh, running at a pretty low RPM. So anyways, uh, yeah, pretty excited about this project, especially now. So I was already, you know, the plane had sat for a long time and, uh, I was discouraged with it because it was just a lot of work and effort and everything else that had gone into it, and then it crashed. Well, sort of crashed. And, uh, yeah, it was, you know, upsetting, and I had to hang it up for a while. So then I got super excited when I got it down and started to fix the tails properly and really got them to where I felt like they would work right. So... Pretty excited about the whole thing, and now with this new motor and prop combination, I'm that much more excited to get it flying again. So, but uh, I have a number of jet events coming up this spring, and as the first one's going to be in a few weeks at our local field, actually in in Arvin. So, um, oh, and before I switch subjects to jets, um, huge thank you to my friend Adam over at RC Aviator. He was kind enough to send me his Jim Ryan Bearcat. So I th I'm pretty sure I posted uh, some pictures of this on my YouTube um, community, but this is a, he saw the video of uh, the Wildcat, the Jim Ryan Wildcat that I fixed up for my friend John. And he thought it'd be neat to send this to me as a gift. So huge thank you to Adam. Um, that's a, it's a really pretty model. The Jim Ryan Bearcat is my favorite Jim Ryan model. I've never flown one, but it's the one I wanted the most. And uh, obviously it's pretty cool. It's uh, smaller than my prop. <laughs> so the plan with this model is, uh, even though it looks nice, you know, the, the plan is to strip it, uh, glass it and paint it and probably match the big one once it's done. So anyways, 
But uh, it looks nicely built, and uh, Adam actually has some video of him flying it on this channel, and it looks like a lot of fun. So huge thank you to Adam for saying that to me. It means a lot when people do stuff like that for you just out of the blue. It was a surprise, and uh, I really appreciate it. So thank you, Adam. But switching over to Jets, uh, we got a, a new toy. So for those who... May not know, um, I'm actually a Horizon sponsored pilot. It's not something I go around advertising, but I am sponsored by Horizon. Uh, well, not sponsored, I am a team pilot, so they don't send me stuff for free, but uh, I do get stuff at a discount, obviously, because I'm a team pilot. Won't go into that, but um, with the new season coming up, and uh, you know, always looking for a fun jet to fly and I already had a turbine for it so um, this is their new MB339 obviously and uh, everything I've seen online these are fantastic flying models I did get a chance to take it out of the box and look at it and honestly I knew it was a nice model but uh, and I'll be doing videos on this thing too but taking a close-up look at the airplane the quality of the build actually was it's a pretty nice model, it's especially at the price point. So, and in fact, uh, I already I took out some of the stuff. I was messing around with it, but it comes with the landing gear. That's the nose wheel, obviously. Um, these are electric, super nice units. I believe they're made by JP or someone in that. I'm pretty sure these are JP brakes. But uh, super nice quality hardware. I got all the servos for it and everything already. So, um, oops. And it comes with a really neat box that controls the brakes and the gear all in one, which is pretty cool. So, anyways, um, the reason I got the 339, I was really trying to figure out what I wanted to get this year. And uh, I had my turbine serviced. This was out of the T38. So, the other. Swim 80 is in my P59, and uh, so this one had to get serviced. The bearings were a little tight, so I had it gone through and checked out, and they replaced the bearings and uh, reshimmed the turbine wheel and all that stuff. So, but the reason I got the 339 is um, it's not something I would typically buy. I'm more of a American airplane guy, um, especially when it comes to jets. I love classic American jets, but I do love foreign stuff too. Um, and while this paint scheme doesn't do a whole lot for me, this trim scheme that they did on this thing, it does look nice. And I plan to fly it that way for probably the first half a season or full season anyways. But the reason I got this airplane was because it's a massive flight um, envelope. So it's a trainer. It's meant to be like a first time jet or, you know, something that somebody who has some jet time can enjoy. And from the videos I've seen, it looks like it does everything really well. So slow flight, super docile, uh, very nice aerobatic airplane. And one of the things I'd like to work on myself is improving in my aerobatic flying capabilities. You know, point rolls, knife edge stuff. Um, and to get better at that. So um, <clears throat> the other reason I got this airplane, aside from... Uh, just being a, a really nice model and being able to represent the brand with their latest and greatest is that uh, this this kid right here, <laughs> um, he didn't ask for it, but I wanted him to get some turbine time. And, you know, obviously when dad hands you over the controls to the 50 pound, you know, super, you know, expensive model like this T38, you're probably not going to want to do that as a kid. And then, you know, I'd try to get him to fly this, and, you know, even though it flies super nice, still a little scared of it, but something like this 339 is um, one of those models that I plan on giving a lot of guys their first turbine experience with. So that was one of the, uh, there was, this is a multi-mission model here, so I wanted to have it for my son so he can get his turbine waiver. Um, get some experience flying turbines. I wanted to fly it too as well and get better at certain things. Um, and then I also wanted to be able to like go to an event or just go to the field and guys who are interested in flying jets, allow them to fly it and get their first turbine experience. I still remember the first time I got to fly a turbine 
and it was a pretty special occasion. Uh, I was only about 12 years old, and uh, I grew up flying at the Muroc Model Masters Field at Edwards Air Force Base, and one of our club members there worked for NASA and was one of the NASA's RC airplane pilots, or one of the one of their UAV pilots, basically, is what he was. And uh, he had a BVM King Cat, and he asked me if I wanted to fly it. Zero jet experience. I've been flying, like, 40 size Warbirds and stuff, like stuff like this P-51. And he offered me the sticks, and obviously, being a 12-year-old, thinking I was pretty hot stuff, I didn't turn him down. <laughs> so, so I took the controls, and... Uh, I still, he let my dad fly it as well, and I just remember how amazing that experience was. So, to a lot of people to have their first experience with a turbine sounds like a neat experience for me to allow that to happen for other people. So, um, I got to pick this up, and so instead of kind of really hammering out this Bearcat, now I really want to take my time and do this thing really, really well. And there's going to be more work that has to be done to it to get it all there. So, I'm not hanging it up just yet. I'm not putting it back away, but it is going to sit on the shelf for a little bit because I need to get this thing put together pretty quick and I have everything for it. So, and speaking of the last little part of that project just showed up in the mail and this is the new Spectrum Synapse um, receiver and gyro setup. So this is their latest and greatest technology for gyros. And I haven't even scratched the surface on what that's even capable of yet. But uh, the plan is to put that into the 339. And just so that the experience is as good as it can possibly be. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to get this thing put together here pretty soon. Probably uh, get the bench cleaned up. And I've just been, you know, obviously I got my fun new toys. So I've been, um, you know, looking at stuff and trying to figure out how I'm going to do certain things. So... I've been messing with this, but we're going to get cleaned up and then start uh, putting this 339 together. And I actually plan on scuffing the film because this is um, film covered. I plan on scuffing it and painting it into a, 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 mil a military scheme of some sort. So some camouflage scheme or something. So I'll probably doll the cockpit up and make it look more of like a scale model. I, it, it is a scale model, but, uh, you know, it's got a sport scheme on it, obviously. So we're going to make it look more like a scale airplane. So we're going to take care of all that at some point, but for now, let's get it flying. So anyways, lots of talking, um, but I got a lot of stuff to get done. I got my first events in three weeks, and then we're going to one in Arizona in the middle of March. And there's a the first one I want to take the Bearcat to is in late April, I believe, at Prado. So that's a scale fly-in that there are no turbines allowed there. So I'd like to have this big old Bearcat done and flying. And... Uh, We'll take it to that event and probably the one at Black Star in June or July, whenever they have it this year. So, anyways, a ton of work to get done. Um, I'll definitely be posting videos on the Bearcat and on the MB339 once we get going on that, which might even be today. We'll see. But, uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the update on the Bearcat. Obviously, some exciting news. And uh, it's going to be pretty insane with a 20-horsepower motor up front. So... Takeoffs will be interesting, and I'm glad I have all this newfound control throw on my on my rudder here. I'm going to need it. So, anyways, hope you guys enjoy the video, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.